on the left is a Tang Shudo guy, on the right is a Muay Thai guy, dressed very accordingly. The history, legacy, etc. of Tang Shudo is filled with a lot of contradictions, so I'm not going to pretend to be an expert, but I welcome anyone who does Tang Shudo to come and tell me some of the history and show me some footage. I've already reached out to some viewers who do Tang Shudo. So Tang Shudo guy got very, very broad shoulders. Oh, he's dropping his hands though. I think if Muay Thai guy is, he's definitely paying attention to that. You see, that's what I'm talking about. So that was a KO. Good stoppage right there. That was it, man. That was it. That was crazy. So we'll slow this down a little bit. See how Tansu guy drops his hands? Guess he doesn't know how to check kicks. See his hands down? So he threw one push kick back, but look at that. He caught the kick and then boom. His hands were involved in catching the kick, so Muay Thai guy just knocked him down. So that's the first match. We go to a second match. This is now a more friendly sparring session. So this is the OC Open Martial Arts Club, and it's really cool because I actually realized they're pretty close to me. So if I'm ever going down to the OC again, no need for me to do more cringe Tai Chi. I can check these guys out, film some of this. So Tang Sudo guy is obviously smaller in weight and has less of a reach. He's the one with the red. So he's wearing more kind of karate slash taekwondo type gloves. Whereas the Muay Thai guy, you see that Muay Thai guy is much more. He's just in his standard Muay Thai garb. He's got the shin shields or whatever you call those shin pads. And then he's got the gloves. Oh, Tang Sudo guy attempting to trip a little. Some of the comments might say, oh my God, if only Tang Shudo guy were a little more aggressive or, you know, played attack more. But I will respond to any of those people who say, if you ever spar a guy like this who's really aggressive and obviously skilled, if you just start attacking more, you're also going to eat more hits, right? That's why Tang Shudo guy is being more defense related. So this isn't, I don't like those comments that are like, oh yeah, he just needs to be more aggressive. No, if... The guy's much bigger and the guy has skill. Being more aggressive just means you're going to open yourself up to more hits. So this is respectful sparring, right? I'm not going to say this is showing anything about anyone because we don't know the ability of the Tang Sudo guy. The Muay Thai guy obviously spars a lot. So and the Tang Sudo guy's giving it a shot, man. He's trying. But I think there's certain strikes that would really help him that I don't know if he's trained in Tang Sudo. So see he, he uses the sidekick a lot, but there's no follow through with that. You see that? I've noticed that a few times where he's been using the sidekick, but if anything, it's only pushing him away from Muay Thai guy. It's not even pushing Muay Thai guy off. It's just lack of this kind of you know kick through or hit through the guy, right? I don't know if this is because of point sparring or he's just not comfortable sparring some guy this big and aggressive. I don't know. And again, um, this is friendly sparring. So this is not an indicator of, you know, who's better, who's not. It just, but I wanted to feature this because I haven't seen too much of non-point sparring Tang Sudo. So I wanted to feature anything I could find that he's even trying to block or parry a little bit. And he tried a leg trip, but you know, not only is this guy strikes, does lacks the power, but it also his um, he, certain leverage positions he's not understanding. But still, it's pretty cool to see. Like, why are you throwing a spinning back kick when you're not even in the right range, right? So, but again, he's just testing it out. So, I think also with Tech, I'm probably going a little harder than he, Like, if you're much skilled than the Tang Sudo guy, you should see that. Okay, Tang Sudo guys. A little intimidated, go a little lighter on him. Just my opinion, but whatever. So next up, we have Chilala. You see this? Chilala using his Wing Chun and his Xing Yi Liu He against this big Tang Sudo guy. Ooh. See, that's what I'm talking about. Like, you gotta be able to stay in the fight for a little bit, right? Staying in the fight forever is really dumb, but being able to stay in the fight a little bit is really important. 
And that's what this guy, I mean, this guy is much bigger than Chilala, so that's probably why he's doing it. But, ooh, Chilala using some Wing Chun. Look at that. Ooh, Chilala caught him. Also, shout out to Chilala for being a very respectful spar partner, too. Oh, ho, ho. the epic amount of ouch. You see, that's the issue with using your Wing Chun techniques. They're fancy, but he still got caught, man. He got caught pretty bad. What does this say about Wing Chun? Again, out of all the Wing Chun people, Chilala is a good representative. I don't care what some of these Wing Chun, you know, whatever you call them, these Wing Chun cultists say, but I see more Wing Chun and Chilala than anyone. But this bigger Tang Su Do guy is able to catch Chilala which, with much harder strikes than the strikes that Chilala has given to him, right? Oh, attempt at a trip. Oh, this is a pretty cool dojo. It's like a garage dojo, but it's a really cool garage dojo. Oh. Chilala avoided that strike from the exit. He's learning. Oh, you see that? Um, He got caught at least two times already by the guy getting his head off center line and just doing a jab. But Tang Sudo guy, you see that? Tang Sudo guy... Sometimes he doesn't follow up his jabs, and then Chilala ends up doing like six strikes on him. And then he's also eating kicks by Chilala, but Chilala's eating leg kicks back like that. So, all right, that was round one. So this is round two. Let's see how they adapt. Tangsudo guy thinking about a Philly shell a little bit. Oof, nice. Chilala's lead hand, man. It's... I don't know how much good that's doing him. Look at that lead hand. For Wing Chun people, explain to me what his lead hand is trying to do. Oh, telegraphed push kick. Oh, that was great. That was classic Wing Chun. He basically baited our Tang Sudo guy into trapping range. So I think that's something I'm learning watching Chilala. If you can bait him into your trapping range, then you might be able to use some Wing Chun. But I think blitzing in and trying to get into his trapping range is not good. So you need really good reflexes and a lot of training. You bait him into your trapping range. Because as we know, um, if you get clinched or wrestled, your trapping range doesn't work, right? And then if you get punched or kicked, your trapping range doesn't work. So... How do you get them into your trapping range? Right? I'm not saying there isn't a trapping range, but I say nine times out of ten, that trapping range just doesn't work for you. So we see rare cases of Chilala making trapping range work. It's like if the guy half commits to a strike and doesn't have an exit kind of like that, right? That's how you get them into trapping range. Because your strikes aren't going to be perfect, right? Sometimes you're just going to misjudge the distance and then you're in what's quote-unquote is trapping range. And if a Wing Chun guy can see that, he will hit you a few times in the face, right? But none of those blows are kind of concussion causing, right? Because they're in trapping range. They're not in your, like the end of your striking range. Just my thoughts, guys. Just my thoughts from watching this. Tilala's about to have another match very, very soon. We're rooting for him. It's against another MMA guy that he's fought two times already and he lost. So, but Tilala tells me he's confident. So this time Tilala is using his lead hand more like a jab quality. You see that? Oh, oh, this time he's trying to bridge. That was definitely an attempt at Xun Tiao bridge. So, oh, okay, he's definitely third round. Maybe he's knowing Jerry's going to look at this. He's doing much more Wing Chun than the first two rounds. It's like one of the viewers, Alunkus, I think, made this joke. Chilala's Kung Fu, how much he uses depends on how much respect he has for the opponent. So if he's not sure about the opponent, he's not going to use too much Wing Chun. If he thinks he can beat you, he's going to use a lot of Wing Chun. So after by the third round, I was like, okay, I know this guy's strengths and weaknesses. I can use more Wing Chun. <laughs> That's what one of the viewers would say. I love that viewer, Alonkis. I don't know what his real name is, but he made one of the funniest comments that has a lot of truth. Like, 
See, before Chill Out was trying to bait him into trapping wrench, right? Now he's trying to find the bridge, as you say, Xun Tiao. He's trying to bridge and actually get the other guy into the trapping range. Oh. So. All right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oof, nice. Nice. All right. Oof, nice. Some of those blocks, the strikes are very good. Wow, this is a very good showcase round of Wing Chun. Wow, good job, Tilala. This is, in fact, Instagram highlight worthy. A little spinning back fist. That was enough. My stomach's growling. That was me. That guy got into trapping range for a little bit, but Tila's reaction time wasn't there. This is definitely the highlight round. Wow. This is karate combat. The white pants guy is a Tung Soo Do guy. And I've tried so hard to contact karate combat and I got in touch with their Facebook team, but I can never reach their marketing team. But if any of you know karate combat, let them know because I would love to interview some of the fighters. But anyways, let's feature a little bit of this match. The Tung Soo Do fighter's name is Rob Buxton. Dude, the little pit thing changes some of the strategies, right? There's all these rules for karate combat that I don't remember. So it's not really like MMA. There's limited ground stuff too, but it's mostly for striking. Ooh, ow. Okay, there was a, there was some issues with the clinch range there for both of them. Oof. The Tang Sudo guys, that is hilarious. The little guard on the diagonal of the pit. The Tang Shu Do guy's kicks are very kind of whip-like. You see, they're very different from the Muay Thai type of baseball kick. And our Adrian Galvan, the non-Tang Shu Do guy, he's a little bit of bleeding from his nose. So the ref's stopping them. Here they go. Oh, charging in. Woof. Oof, wow. Sometimes that little kind of suicidal type of fighting style can work, right? <laughs> Look at the ref getting in the way. The, um, I mean, if this is karate combat, the guy in the black gi pants just obviously moves like a standard karate guy, right? He's very, what is the word, bladed, I believe it's called. Tashino guy has good combos. He just... There's a little awkwardness in his movements, but again, I'm not complaining about that. Awkwardness doesn't mean weakness, right? It's just different than what you expect if you're used to watching MMA or Muay Thai. Fighting in the clinch, but like no knees being thrown. And I believe you're not allowed to elbow, I think. I don't know. This is so funny to see this type of... I just got distracted by the women behind them. I, those are definitely women that paid to in the audience anyway um the the pit format makes it look at this he's trying to go under his legs no ability to sweep or anything by a karate guy huh well i'm glad we feature this man because the previous examples the tung sudo guys just i mean the guy who sparred silala was okay but the other guys didn't do very well, so this guy at least has had, I would say, a lot of kickboxing training in addition to Tang Shudo. I'm just going to put it out there. I don't know because I don't know how much kickboxing versus Tang Shudo training he has, but a lot of karate guys, if they want to compete, right, they have to do some kickboxing. So what I mean by kickboxing is like a karate-based type of style mixed with karate, sorry, mixed with boxing. It's so like boxing mixed with karate, basically. That's what I mean by kickboxing. Um, look at that. Oh, he got kicked. He got clipped. He got clipped. He, the kick hit him in the face. Nope. The action got stopped a little. Now they're both on the ground. Yeah, these rules are kind of bizarre, man. I don't know what to think about these rules with the pit. Why not just let them stay in the pit and just I, I stay on the inclined part of the pit. Just let them fight it out. All right. 
Go. Ow. Nice. Karate guy needs to keep doing that. Throw some uppercuts. Don't get pushed down. Oh, not bad. Karate guy's figuring out a little bit of a single leg. A little sidekick. See, he's always getting backed up, man. Our Tang Sudo guy has ring control. He's totally the one controlling the ring. Oh, you guys back taken. Ah, oh, too bad it's not him and me. Man, the karate guy so had an advantage there, but the rules, ah, oh, the rules, people, right? People always complain about the rules. This is one of those the rules types of situations. We'll watch a little bit more, and then you guys watch the rest of it, please. Oh, he's turning his back. He's running away. Yeah, okay, Bob got this. Tansudo guy got this. I mean, we get it. You guys watch the rest of this. Hope you guys enjoyed what we covered, but please, I've been subscribed to them for a while. I've been subscribed to them when they had fewer subscribers than me, so I'm really happy that they are going up there. I just hope some of these guys go into MMA, too, or something, because there were moments where, dude, if there were fewer rules, the fortunes would have shifted immediately. So I'm going to extend an invitation out to all of you guys. I've actually reached out to a few of my viewers. And for those of you who do Taekwondo, did I just say Taekwondo? I am so sorry. For those of you who do Tang Sudo, who have footage, please send it to me. Please, no BS, right? Don't send me compliance drills. Don't send me point fighting. Send me some of this stuff, please. Because Tang Sudo is something I've never explored. And I know very little about Tang Sudo. And of course, there's different definitions of Tang Sudo. Like really different definitions, right? Depending on who you ask. Like there's Tang Sudo that's more Chinese based. But then there's Tang Sudo that's more Korean based. And there's probably Tang Sudo that's more Japanese based. So... If anybody that's a Tang Sudo expert or whatever wants to interview on Fight Commentary Chats, we can talk about Tang Sudo too. Okay, guys, this was Fight Commentary Breakdowns. Thank you guys so much. Send me Tang Sudo footage.